During the course of my reporting, I've dealt with bed bugs, run head on into walls, even been lit on fire. All in the service of bringing you inside a world rarely seen by outsiders. But for the first time, we're taking you back in time. Kinda. Picture it, Brooklyn, 1776. And I'm in a hunting shirt, typical of a continental soldier. My guide in this quantum leap, historian Barnett Schechter. How significant was this battle to this American experiment? Well, think of it this way. The Battle of Brooklyn, August 27th, 1776. This was the largest battle of the American Revolution. And if you think about it, the first battle in US history, right? Because the Declaration Later. of Independence, right, right. Yeah. And this was the first battle where we had officially declared that we were a new nation. And now we had to make it a reality. The reality of that new nation is that it was separated from the old world by a vast ocean, a geographical position that inspired a worldview characterized by isolation. Don't know much about isolationism. I know about we're trying to gain our independence from Great Britain, but being isolated, I don't know. I have no idea. We've had something going on here in the colonies, going back, I guess, from this was New Amsterdam called global trade, but uh, I never heard that term. If the man credited with laying the foundation of America remaining unbothered by foreign strife never even heard the word, have we made too much of Washington's warning to mind our own business? Washington looked around and he saw that the United States was blessed with a certain physical isolation, that we had oceans on both east and west, and we were able to try to stay out of the political intrigues that were going on in Europe. And he was afraid that if we did get involved in them, ultimately the United States would lose because we would be manipulated. I don't think Washington wanted us to be completely isolated. If we got Washington's warning wrong, maybe there were other things about America's first war that deserve re-examination. What role did the fairer sex play in the war effort? Significant. Cooking, nursing, sewing, washing, bringing water back and forth to gun crews or soldiers, also stepping into the shoes of, of men that were killed. Oh, wow. Yeah, and actually picking up arms. Really? Yes, also serving as spies, messengers. Yeah. Uh, at, at all levels of society. Full disclosure, I expected to be the only chocolate chip in the cookie today. <laughs> and then came Marblehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Marbleheaders were a group of fishermen mm -hmm. that were fighting the British even before the uh, war officially started. They were defending the cod fishing ground. And the Marbleheaders were comprised of 40% people of color. Right. George Washington appealed to the captain of the fleet, which is Captain Glover, mm -hmm. and appealed to him to join the Continental Army. So he actually uh, became part of the Continental Army. The men followed him in, right. became the 14th Continental. The story of black soldiers doesn't stop there. For many slaves, the revolution provided their first step towards self-determination. They were told that if you join the American Army, we'd be given freedom after the war. So if you're a slave, what's the one thing you want above all? Freedom. But what's not talked about is the other side of the coin. The British also said, if you take the king's shilling, we'll give you an acre of land and immediate emancipation. What do you think happened? 11,000 blacks joined the British army. We were there. We shed our blood. We fought on this ground. And it belongs to us as much as anybody else. This is more than a hobby for me. This is a chance to enlighten African-Americans to the role that we played in American history. Well, mission accomplished. And I'll admit, I always thought of historical reenactors at best as nerds playing dress up and at worst as racist. Nostalgic for the bad old days when America didn't need to be made great again. Come on. How many of these guys you think will give up their Sunday afternoon to reenact Nat Turner's rebellion? So do you think there are people who 
fully show up here expecting to live the glory days when America was great, and then they run into your black self, <laughs> and they're like, whoa, wait well, a minute. The, well, I'm a living story, which is a bit different than reenactor, right? So okay. we go out and we actually uh, educate. Okay, no, it's just not about a glory. What's glory about losing a war? We lost this battle. There's nothing glorious about it. But we... You're supposed to say spoiler <laughs> alert before we get to the battle. So yes, a spoiler alert if you slept through history class that day. America did, in fact, lose the Battle of Brooklyn. I'm no oracle, but I think this thing is going to go pretty well for you guys today. You feeling yes, confident does. about your chances? I think so. I think so. They are untrained rabble. Outnumbered and outgunned by the Redcoats, those British soldiers, once countrymen, now adversaries, waged war on that rabble. And by battle's end, the Americans suffered 1,000 casualties to the British loss of only 400 men. But things could have been worse. Our purpose isn't to come and shoot a bunch of people. Our purpose is to take our relatives, because many of us are related to somebody in the colonies, and shake them a little bit and get them to see the sense of staying part of Britain. You won't see us slaughtering them when we get the opportunity, because we're still hoping that we're going to get them to come back. While the Brits were endeavoring to cannonball their wayward cousins back into the fold, Americans were flexing their newly declared independence. Nearly 240 years later, the new commander-in-chief is still flexing those muscles, but it's a different world. Technology, as they say, has created a, a small world, and we are much more interconnected in terms of information, in terms of travel, and frankly, in terms of our vulnerability to intercontinental ballistic missiles. I don't think we can uh, afford to be isolated. So sometime into hundreds of years from this battle, this nation might be flirting with some more sort of isolationist <laughs> tendencies. How do you think that's gonna fare for them? Hmm. Well, hopefully they'll have a much more organized military, but I would hope that by then they'll have learned more diplomacy skills as well, and the value of having alliances with people in other countries, and maybe they can work things out in a way that doesn't involve guns. George and what remained of his army escaped into the night, living to fight another day and ultimately, of course, winning the war. And America has, on occasion, learned to employ democracy and rely on alliances. For all their faults, those founders also gave some very sound advice. Let's make new mistakes, America.